talk. We invite your apprehensive listening. We shall begin now. I'll tell you this story like you've never heard it. Your mind and your emotions will want to reject it. Try to refocus and direct your mind to listen to this lesson I'm about to give you. Trust me. We need to talk. We invite your apprehensive listening. We shall begin now. Before you sit at the table of demons this Easter, this is just a friendly reminder from your neighborhood prophet. Celebrating the festival of Ishtar or Easter or Easter is not a thing that a believer, follower, or disciple of Yahusha HaMashiach would ever participate in. The argument that it was Christianized does not stand. You cannot make pagan practices holy. It doesn't matter what your intentions are. If that was a good argument, it would mean that Yahuwah was unjust when he punished the Israelites after they built the golden calf to worship him. He didn't accept it in, in that day. He doesn't accept it now. He never has accepted idolatry. You can build him the most beautiful practice that you want and give it all kinds of holy names but it's not his way and he does not accept it let's check out Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 18 and 19 if I say to the wicked man you shall surely die and you the prophet give him no warning nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way in order to save his life that wicked person will die for his iniquity but his blood I will require at your hand but if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wicked way he will die for his iniquity but you will have delivered your soul let's check out Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 woe to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness? Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter? Um, let's reference that to this chat. Woe to those who say they are celebrating the resurrection of the Messiah on the festival days of the imposter false Elohim. James 4.4 4, You adulterers, don't you know that friendship with the world means hostility with God? So whoever wants to be a friend of this world is an enemy of God. Okay, let's put that in reference to this discussion. You adulterers, you honor the satanic festivals, your inherited tradition, and it's more important to you than obeying the actual law of Yahuwah. Whoever wants to practice the satanic festivals is an enemy of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 20 through 21. I imply that what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of Yahuwah and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of Yahuwah and the table of demons. And that's what you're trying to do when you incorporate satanic rituals and call them holy. You're partaking of the blood of the Messiah at the table of the great whore, Queen of Heaven. 1 John 2.15 Stop loving the world and the things that are in the world. If anyone persists in loving the world, the Father's love is not in him. 1 Corinthians 3.1 Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants, and um, that applies to this because that's how I'm talking to you. You haven't investigated what was handed to you. You were given little, have done nothing with it. So what you have will be taken from you. Ephesians 5, 11 through 12. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Like, if you understood the implications of the origins of Easter, you would vomit and never stop weeping. Psalm 94, 16. 
Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will stand for me against those who practice iniquity? I guess I will. John 7.24 Don't judge according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Righteous judgment is in reference to the covenant law of Yahuwah. Not Levitical law, covenant law. 1 Corinthians 6.2 or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? In reference to this discussion, look it up. Judge whether your explanations are true. Are you accepting whatever sounds good to you? Or are you trying to understand the gospel, which is offensive to the natural man? Because you're partaking in traditions of men with explanations that make no sense according to the righteous law of Yahuwah. It's imperative to search out the scriptures and to discover the hidden things of Yahuwah. It is the glory of Yahuwah to conceal a thing, and it is the honor of kings to search it out. Proverbs 25, 2. Test all things, hold fast to what is good. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21. Acts 17.11, the people there were more honorable than the people in Thessalonica. They listened to the message with great eagerness, and every day they studied the scriptures to see if what Paul said was really true. Now, when it comes to these pagan practices in the church, any church, any denomination, you name it, they all participate in some way, because their mother is Satanism. You know, these, these traditions... They aren't even in Scripture in a good way. The only times that these traditions are mentioned in Scripture is to call them wicked, evil, vile, and hated by God. How can you just ignore a warning like this and continue participating in these practices? Now, it's weighing on my heart because a lot of my... Uh, I want to believe they're brothers and sisters. I'm having a really hard time with it right now because of the level of ignorance and incompetence. Even church leaders are emblazoning their social media with the name of Ishtar across their family photo. Do you have any idea what you're actually saying when you do that? Right. The, the pagans, the Wiccans, the hermetic magicians, every sorcerer on the planet, all the Satanists, everyone knows that you're practicing Satanism in the church. And they can't believe that you think you're different from them. That's why they hate you. They don't hate you because you serve the, the Father. They hate you because you serve their Father and claim to be better than them. What I'm showing you here are images from a simple Google search. They are from all over the world and various time periods. These pictures are artistic depictions of the god you are worshipping on Easter. He, she is Ashtaroth, the unholy spirit of the unholy trinity. This is the god worshipped every Easter by the whole world, even by those who have been led to believe they are celebrating the resurrection of the son of Yahuwah. Here's a quick synopsis of the historical relevance. In the early days when the followers of the way of righteousness had become numerous due to the work of the disciples, the Nimrodian satanic system suffered some serious setbacks. In response, they staged a revolt against the way of Yahusha HaMashiach by gaining control of the sacred texts and then they began a systematic reinterpretation and distribution of their versions while massacring the true followers of the way. You need to understand this basic fact. There is nothing that Yahuwah has done that has not been mirrored and imitated by the followers of darkness. By incorporating their mirrored occult knowledge into a vast spectrum of religions, the whole world has been compelled to obey and serve the deposed day star. There are not many religions only one with many faces. These faces of the mother religion, the hybrid God, man-God, 
gods and goddesses Nimrodian system provides the masses with comfortable interpretations and practices to keep them blind to the truth and numb to the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. I know most people in religion actually have a strong desire for truth and to worship the one true Yahuwah Elohim. That's why I make such a concentrated effort to introduce insights and revelation, like in this video. I know some of you want to be righteous, but you are drowning in the depths of deception and thus cannot see the truth. It takes a seriously humble approach in order to admit that you, just like everyone else, have been deceived. Once you can admit that, you will find it a difficult and painful path to separate yourself from the deception. Easter is centered on one important satanic ritual, and that is to impregnate the priestesses so that the child sacrifices of the next year will be born by Christmas. When you participate in Easter festivals, you are engaging in an orgiastic satanic ritual in honor of the false Holy Spirit. You are partaking of the sick, perverted, twisted practice of preparing the priestess prostitutes with pregnancy so that the child's sacrifices can be murdered for false gods. It is the satanic mirrored principle that is in direct opposition to the the church is just the revitalization and reawakening of the occult teachings of the watcher angels under the banner of the deposed day star after the ecclesiastical priestly kingship of Nimrod. The evidence is overwhelming and undeniable. The only way to deal with this truth, if you truly desire to serve the true Father Yahuwah, is to remove yourself in every way from the deception. There is no true denomination. There is no holy church, as cited in the so-called Apostles' Creed. There is the way of righteousness, and those who live it are the Nazarene, the guardians of the way of Torah. These persecuted, obedient believers in the one true Yahuwah Elohim gather together. The biblical word is ecclesia, gathering, not church. There is no hierarchy, no pope, no superintendent, and no sacred buildings or artifacts. The Torah is engraved in their hearts and minds and acted upon with their hands, their actions. There is one high priest, and he is the son of Yahuwah. He sends his Ruach, spirit, to remind us of the Torah and to comfort us in our afflictions. If at any time you find yourself worshipping a book, meeting in a sacred building, or acquiescing to a holy person, I offer you this warning. You are engaged in idolatry. Easter, like every other satanic day of worship, is not acceptable for anyone who walks in the light. No, I'm not trying to take away the celebration of the resurrection of the Son of Yahuwah. That is not what I'm trying to do. I'm also not trying to put you under the law, and I'm not trying to judge you inequitably. What I'm trying to do is help you work yourself out of the murk and the darkness and the despair of the deception that we've all been born into. If you want to celebrate the resurrection of the Messiah then do Passover. You know, you missed it this year, but I'm sure that God's grace will allow you to celebrate it a little bit late. Now, celebrating Easter is not celebrating the resurrection of the Messiah. It is Satanism. Please correct your behavior. I'm begging you. Please.
Messiah. He came to seek and save that which was lost. He came to save his people from their sins, but he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered tremendously, he died and was buried. But on the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. The resurrection of the Messiah from the dead was the most significant event that the world has ever seen. And what better way to teach our children about the depth of this long-awaited victory over sin and death than by telling them that a pink rabbit snuck in through the air vent of their house in the middle of the night and left baskets full of chocolate eggs and a bunch of pink Walmart crap hidden under the cushions. And then after that, after they've nearly had a diabetic seizure, you take them down to the local cathedral and observe the ancient mass of Ishtar, the Assyrian and Babylonian goddess of war and sex. Now, does something about this seem a little strange to anyone else out there? I mean, is that a little weird? So what is this Easter deal anyways? I remember being a bit confused as a kid. I mean, what's up with the Easter bunny? What does that have to do with the resurrection, you know? Although we convince our kids that rabbits lay colorful eggs in the bushes, we know that this is not reality. This story is not as innocent and cute as many think. So, what's going on here? Where does this all come from anyways? Yeah, I don't want to make up any any more fictional stories than there already are floating around out there. So, let us just consult the mother of all churches and see what she has to say about all this. Easter. The English term relates to Estre a Teutonic goddess of the rising light of day and spring. That's interesting. Okay. So what does that have to do with the resurrection, the the goddess here? You know, some of the other names for this ancient Teutonic mother goddess, they include Ishtar, Istre, Estarte, Ostarte, Ostera, Astareth, These are all names that originated from the original mother goddess Samaramis, the mother of Tammuz. In short, Ishtar was the wife of Baal, also called the queen of heaven. Wait a second here. Ishtar was the wife of Baal? Baal Sabab? Satan's wife? That's just great. I mean, I'm really glad for Ishtar. You know, she, she made a good choice. Scholars of comparative mythology draw a parallel between the Egyptian goddess Isis and the Babylonian goddess Ishtar. Ishtar was called Astrath, or the Queen of Heaven, by the Israelites. You can read that in Judges chapter 2, or uh, Jeremiah, I think it's chapter 44, maybe. This mother goddess, well known in the Eastern world, was frequently worshipped as the goddess of sex. Orgies and temple prostitutes were often used in her worship. Now, what in the world does the goddess of sex have to do with the resurrection of of Christ? If you read what the churches have to say, they'll actually admit that the Easter egg might come from ancient paganism. Oh, what a light way of saying it. Let's look at this a little bit farther. The origins of these things are very well documented. All you have to do is take a couple of hours, do some unbiased research in any decent library, and you'll find all these things out for yourself very easily. Here's the original Easter story in a nutshell, real fast, okay? All right. According to the ancient historian Josephus, Nimrod, you know, the king of Babylon, was punished for his rebellion at the Tower of Babel by Noah's son Shem. His body was cut into many pieces and sent to the surrounding communities as a warning against idolatry. Nimrod's wife, Samaramis, the queen of Babylon, she claimed that he did not actually die, but rather ascended into heaven and had become the sun god. She, of course, being the wife of the sun, had to make herself into a goddess. I mean, that's just automatic, you know. 
Now, Sam Ramis taught that the moon was a goddess that went through a 28-day cycle and ovulated when it was a full moon. She then claimed that she came down from the moon in a giant moon egg that fell into the Euphrates River and hashed open, and she came out the bare-breasted, you know, Ishtar. Th this incident, according to her story, supposedly happened at the time of the first full moon after the spring equinox. Does that ring any bells out there? Just checking. Sam Ramis then became known as Ishtar, and her moon egg became known as Ishtar's egg. Ishtar, a.k.a. Sam Ramis, she claimed that she had become pregnant then by the rays of the sun, and then later she had this little baby, they named him Tammuz. Now here's where we meet the little Ishtar bunny. Tammuz was noted to be especially fond of rabbits. He really liked the little bunny rabbits. And they became sacred in the ancient religion. I mean, after all, Tammuz was considered to be the kid of the new sun god, now named Baal. You know, Tammuz, like his supposed daddy Nimrod, became a really good hunter. Later one day, when Tammuz grew up and was 40 years old, he was actually killed by a wild boar while out hunting. And Ishtar, being the uh, eternal sex goddess of the sun, used the rabbit that Tammuz likes so much in her religion as a sign of sexual desire and fertility. Now, rabbits are still a sign of sexual desire and fertility to this day. That, that's pretty much common knowledge. We all know about that. Now, Easter, by the time her son Tammuz was killed, was worshipped as the mother of God and the queen of heaven. She, she continued to build her mystery religion and proclaim this 40-day period of time of sorrow each year prior to the anniversary of the death of her son Tammuz. During this time of 40 days, no meat was to be eaten. If you want more on this weeping for Tammuz, you can read about it and what God has to say about it. In Ezekiel chapter 8, he kind of condemns it a little bit. Ever since uh, Semiramis instituted her Babylonian mystery religion all across the world, every year on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox, a sunrise mass or sacrifice was made to Easter, in which the priest of Easter would impregnate virgins on the altar at sunrise. Those virgins then became pregnant, and a year later, that next coming spring around the time of Easter, those infants were usually about three months old, and they would be sacrificed on the altar of Easter, and the priests would then dye Ishtar's eggs in their blood. You'd think that this practice would be dead, but it's not dead. We all know that that practice is not dead still very much alive and well today. The March 21st sacrifice itself to the goddess Ostara, which is another name for Easter, is still on the Luciferian and Satanic calendar of occult holidays, even to this day. Now, these sick practices are strongly condemned by the God of the Hebrew Scriptures anyways. As even the, the children of Israel, they got deceived into doing it for a time. But now we would never fall for something like that. I mean, after all, we've got it all figured out, don't we? I step onto the street with holy fire at my feet. Blood pumps the gospel with every heartbeat, a light burning in my eyes. You can hear the flapping wings as demons run it high. Here's a battlefield, pick your side.
asks Ezekiel, Will you judge this city of bloodshed? Then explain to them what they are doing wrong. God then details the practices of the people. There is a conspiracy of her princes within the land, they shed blood and kill people to make unjust gain. Her priests do violence to my law and profane my holy things. They teach that there is no difference between the unclean and the clean. Her prophets whitewash these deeds for them by false visions and lying divinations. They say, this is what the Sovereign Lord says when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land practice extortion and commit robbery. They oppress the poor and needy and mistreat the foreigner, denying them justice. Hey, I'm just trying to tell you the truth. Well, you're stupid. Man, you betted everything. I heard from a guy who heard from a guy who heard a sermon that said something completely different from what you're saying. Come at me with the opinions of other men. You don't even look into it for yourself. You don't even have your own opinion. You're just judging based on what someone else told you to think. You way that bitch. You, uh, you don't know theology at all. Mockery is not a valid argument. You way that bitch. I reject your anarchy. You say it like this. Your doctrine came from demonic minds Corrupting the law with their love and lies Faked in your heart as you live your own life Leaving no room for Messiah's light Fake days named after false Elohim Injecting your sons with the unclean things Mixing the light with the day stars dark Willingly reject the creator's mark Rampaging beasts and the sky aflame Changing the times and the law for shame Serving a god that his fathers did not Religious orders act like the daughters of Lot All I want to do is share what I have You strange but great With the doctrines of man Once again rejecting the prophets in the land It seems so few are not stark raving mad The things that we've been taught All lead to not An empty circus show A vain glorious thought Step back, rewind Take another look To return to the essence of what you gave you You're at a crossroads and I'm here to guide you You don't need to fear the ruach inside you Reminds you what the law gives you The power to reject Babylon as you seek the truth from the same position you're in right now. I used to preach that doctrine, and I never looked at where it came from. I mean, think about it. Where did the doctrine come from? Why did it get formatted? You have to argue these things from a new perspective when you're offered new information. You can't just refer back to the same doctrine that is being argued with. And if you're not going to consider what I have to say, then I'm not going to waste my time and effort with you. I'll find someone who will actually consider it. Well, you're just arrogant. And I know you don't know what I'm sharing with you because you keep quoting verses from a corrupted translation that was actually made by people who wanted to promote the doctrine you're defending. That's why I'm arguing against it. It's wrong. You're going to have to either come out and say that I'm a false teacher or a false prophet, or you're going to have to consider what I have to say as something that just might have some merit to it. You will have peace. Bereshit bara Elohim alaftav ha-shamaim bat ha-retz the perfect law. Anarchy is not the result of grace. Grace restores to the righteous way. Melchizedek order in the land again. Restoring the division to the sons of Shem. Engraving the Torah in the hearts of men. Numbering your days in the light again. Just like you, I want to get it right. We want to measure up in the Father's eyes. The strong delusion came and we fell in the trap. We consumed everything they put in our lap. I cried out for years for the wisdom of truth. Rejecting every knowledge of my arrogant youth. For now we see in part to be revealed more fully. The truth we think we know is the path of folly. You think 
I'm trying to point out these things so that uh, we can have an argument or so that uh, I can get you back under the law or whatever you want to say. That's ridiculous. You know me better than that. I'm not trying to be right. I'm just trying to share information that's accurate. Do what you want with it. From Incarceria, all the north and south Against a righteous way, the dragon opened his mouth It doesn't matter who you are, it's all one religion Designed and built according to the day star's vision He killed the Nazarene and gave the Christian mission To divide all believers by denomination To provide the word of Yah with distinct revisions To compel the whole world to give him veneration You wanna be saved, then believe in the name But you don't know the name of the one who saves So you want to be part of the eternal kingdom But you scorn the ordinance of the rainy sun the truth is hidden from me, so he sends the Zadix to restore the ministration of the milky wisdom. But you do like they did in the days of old, and you don't know what your reading's been foretold. How far will you go? How much will you deny? Everything you say is filled with blatant flies. I know you don't know, that's why I'm saving so you Worship the day star like a moth to the glow, to the glow, 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 to the glow. The things we've been taught all lead to naught. An empty circus show of inglorious thought. Step back, rewind, take another look to return to the essence of what I gave you. You're at crossroads and I'm here to guide you. You don't need to fear the rhubarb inside you. Reminds you of the law, gives you the power to reject Babylon as you seek the truth. Seek the truth. The things we've been taught all lead to not an empty circus show of vain glorious thought. Step back, rewind, take another look to return to the essence of what Yah gave you. If you want to serve the Father, Yahweh Elohim, correctly, the way He wants you to, then please take this warning seriously and stop worshiping the false Elohim.